Yeah, sure. I'm Roman Potscheider. Um, I'm 30 years old and I work at Optitune since six years now as a leader for the electronic experiments of the group. I started uh, my career or my education at ETH. I did a bachelor and master's in electrical engineering with a specialty on micro and optical electronics. Um, during my master's, I wasn't very sure where I would want to go, so I kept it very broad. I, I tried to, to get various lectures on different topics to get an insight into several things. I even took lectures on the railway systems, for example, uh, which I never used since then, but it was interesting. Um, and then for my master's thesis, I wanted to go into the industry, see a bit more than academia, because I thought that might more be where I fit. And I found Optotune um, through that, and I did my master's thesis with Optotune. It was actually quite a cool project. Um, I was able to design an ultra-fast tunable lens that was actually quicker than anything they had done so far, so I was really proud of that. And then they had an easy time of convincing me to stay on. Sure, I mean, I started, as I said, as a master student, so that's pretty much on the lowest level you can get. Uh, I was sitting in the lab next to the noisy machines and was doing my stuff there, trying to build that lens. Um, no, but then when I properly started, when I got employed, I got a proper office as well. Um, I was in the group of, of Chris Lanning, um, who does the liquid lens development. Um, so I was immediately involved in interesting projects where we where we tried to improve and fix issues with our technology and um, customize designs for different customers so actually starting on my first day I, I got handed a task that was really challenging where I could start investigating things and and really it played well to my skills so I could really progress very quickly yeah sure the, the very first project I did was trying to um, thermally stabilize our lenses meaning by actively compensate for temperature effects in the lenses. Um, at the time, we already knew that, that lenses are somewhat affected by the temperature. Um, we had all the sensors already integrated into the devices, but we hadn't figured out the algorithms quite yet. So then it was my task to come up with experiments, um, set up um, test um, plans for how to investigate this. And once I had all the data, make sense of it, figure out how we could actually compensate for these effects, characterize them, and and in the end, um, I also was able to actually guide it through until it got released in a firmware release on our drives. Sure, I mean, the, the big term we always say is like we do adaptive optics. Um, so we do optical components. Um, we never do full systems. We always deliver one component that is usually the key component in an optical system. And we are special in that all our components are somewhat moving, deforming, adaptive in any sense. Um, the biggest product line we have, and also the oldest one, is the tunable lenses. So that's liquid-filled lenses that actually deform their shape um, when you change the pressure inside. And that allows you to get lenses that change their focal power depending on an actuation signal. The project I worked on during the last two years um, was a, a very small, um, high-speed tunable lens. It wasn't quite as fast as the one I did in my master thesis, but it was it was still quite quick. And this is now used in, in the machine vision area where you want to read like barcodes or, or get images and parts are moving by very fast. So you want to focus on different levels on like a conveyor belt, for example, in a very short amount of time. So these lenses are then used to, to allow machine vision systems to focus very quickly, very accurately. Another application of, of, of our lenses um, is in ophthalmology, um, where if you go to the eye doctor, you will, maybe not now, but hopefully very soon, uh, have an instrument in front of your head that instead of switching in uh, glass lenses, you will get a nicely continuously tunable and len optotune lens in front of your eye and that will help you get a more accurate prescription for your um, eye correction. I had to learn a lot of things. Um, on the technical side, I, I learned how to do FEM simulations, for example. I had no prior experience from ETH on this, and, and I learned that from scratch here. Um, I certainly got better at programming, because data analysis always involves a little bit of programming, so that, that was an opportunity I had as well. And now, since I moved more towards um, actually leading a group, there is a lot of soft skills that, that I really have to learn how to lead people, how to uh, guide them, um, I think, 
one crucial thing I learned is that it is essential in my current task that I very quickly can can understand the problem that someone has, ask maybe a few questions, even if I don't fully understand the details they're working on, because they are the specialist and I'm now a bit a bit outside and have to dive in, maybe help them out, ask them the right questions and help them move on for, uh, quickly. There is in general, of course, always the opportunity to progress towards a, a group leader function where you, where you will lead a few people. Um, but what is maybe special about Optotune is that it is valid very highly here that you can also progress in a technical ability. So there is no one is kept back because they don't want to be bothered with leading people. So if you're technically very good, if you're an expert in your field, you can progress at the same rate as someone who maybe takes like a leading functionality or a project management functionality. So this is something I personally haven't pursued here at Optotune now, but I can see the value of that and I'm sure there is people who would enjoy this. I think the good thing is I can't tell you what a typical day looks like because every day is different. <laughs> um, no, I mean, we always start from the premise of we want to get a good end product, we want to improve it, and with that comes solving issues, looking at problems, seeing development opportunities, yeah, improvement opportunities. So I would say most of the day is driven by investigating the questions. You think about what do I need to know next? What do I need to experiment on? How do I do I need to take a lens, take a driver, go to the lab, program a test sequence, run it and record some data. On another day, you might then be analyzing that data. And on a third day, you might be preparing a presentation to actually sell that to your project manager and make sure that he understands this is a great idea that you just have. I didn't have a hard time. <laughs> I kind of miss like the, the the mindset in academia where you can just really spend your time um, drilling down deep into a subject. Um, so that's maybe the thing you kind of have to learn coming from a university that somehow you have to always see the goal, make sure that the thing you're doing is actually efficient, you're, you're moving towards your target and that you don't lose yourself in details. So I would say that's maybe the change that's required coming from, from any university like ETH where theory is valued quite highly. First and foremost, it's the team that we have here. I think we, I can work with very clever people, very smart people that are experts in their fields. Um, it's really enjoyable to just bump off ideas of someone and actually get a clever response back and sometimes get new ideas. Um, we have a very open culture, we have open offices, everyone can walk in, ask someone a thing. Um, for me that's the most attractive um, environment to work in because it, it helps you grow, it helps you learn new things that might not be directly related to your job just because you are involved in some discussion. So that, I would say, is the number one um, reason that keeps me at Optitude.